So next up in our JavaScript interview series, we're going to be talking about callback functions. Now, to truly understand something, very often you'll be asked to build an example of something. So, callback functions. I've got some starter code here if you want to copy of that. There's a link to it is down in the description. And what I'm going to do is we've got a function here that runs right at the beginning. It's an iffy immediately invoked function expression. It's going to run and inside here we want to use a callback. And our callback function is going to take some data as one of its parameters. And so what I want to do is I'm going to create a callback function. I'll just call it my callback. Inside of here, I want the callback to decide whether I should be calling one of two functions and then passing in another argument like this. So similar to how, uh, if you've ever done anything with geolocation, similar to how the uh, get current position, watch current position works, you pass in a success function, a failure function, and then some parameters, some options. So we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to pass in the uh, for the win function, the WTF function, and we're going to pass in one of our objects here, so Castiel. And just for the sake of it, just for the heck of it, we're going to call it a second time just to show that it does work. There we go. So we have here, we're calling some method, and we need to create this function. This is going to be a callback function. The reason it's called a callback function is you pass in the names of other functions and then it will in turn call those after it does something. So let's create these callback functions. So my callback is going to be the name of the function like that and it has to accept three parameters. So we have to put three things here because we're going to use them. So we'll have a good function, a bad function, or a success, and a failure function, and then some data. Let's say we're passing in a character name. Okay, so this is the basic structure what we have here. We're calling the callback function inside of our main application. This callback function has to do something, and then it will in turn call one of the functions that we've given it. That's the callback. So let's create a timeout here. Uh, very often callback functions are used for things that are asynchronous, like geolocation. You want to fetch the current location. Well, we don't know exactly how long that's going to take, so that's an asynchronous thing. Whenever the answer comes back or the failure comes back, that's when the callback will return to us. And it returns to us through this mechanism. We've given it functions to call. So it will want to do something like this. It'll want to call that function or it'll want to call this function. And the way it does that is through these names. So we're passing in the name of the function so that we can make it run. Now you can do it like this. You can do it with an apply. You can do it with call. You can do it with bind, although bind will not run the function, it'll give you back a function so that you can then run it afterwards like this. So that's the idea. We're calling some function and we're giving it the names of other functions which will come up here so that we can, after this is done, whatever it's doing, call them or call one of them. So let's clear that up. We'll do something a little bit practical here. We'll do a, a set timeout. So I'll create my timer. I'm just going to get a random number between 1 and 0 to know how many seconds delay. So math.random times 1000. So a random number between 0 and 1000 will be the number of milliseconds I'm going to wait. Then, because callbacks should be doing something, I'm going to take the character that we're passing in, and down here you can see that's one of these two objects, and we'll find out this property here is good, true or false. That'll be our determiner as to whether or not we call the FTW or WTF function. Okay, so if character dot is good. So if that is true, then what we're going to do is we're going to call our good function. And we're going to pass to it character dot name. Now, I'm passing this through 
because these two functions are both expecting to get something back. Now it doesn't have to be the same thing. They are two separate functions. So as two different functions, they can accept two different things. They don't have to do the same thing. I'm just doing that for simplicity's sake. Just like that. So the character is one of these objects is being passed in. That's our options. That's our data being passed in here. We're making some sort of decision based on that. We're looking at one of the properties and based on that, I'm calling one of the other two functions and we're going to pass to that. We've passed some data here to here and then some of that data is being used to go on to the next function. So this comes to here. This then is used to determine the if statement and then is passed along so it's going to come down to here. So this name should be one of these two properties. All right, well, let's save that and we'll run it. There we go, we can run it again. Okay, so those are immediately running. Now we should use our callback here. So let's, this is functional. So now our timer, because callbacks are very often asynchronous things. So the way we do this inside of a set timeout, the set timeout has three parameters or, or more. First parameter is what's the name of the function that you want to call? So that's going to be our good func. There we go. There's the name. Second is what's the delay. So we can see right here, what's the handler. That's what's the function. Timeout is the delay and then arguments. There's a whole bunch of arguments that have been passed in. So we're going to put Timmy in here and then character name is the final one. So there's the three things that we're passing in the name of the function to call, how long to wait. And this is the name that's coming out of the character object. So this will be the parameter passed to this function. And then we'll do the same thing down here. So again, set timeout, bad func, Timmy, and then the character name. So looks pretty much the same, but this is a callback. Doing something asynchronously with set timeout, it's taking in the names of a one or more functions to call. It's taking in some data to use to pass along to those functions in some manner. Okay, let's try this one more time. And now there should be a bit of a delay. There we go. There is a bit of a delay when it gets called and the order is not always going to be the same because it's random numbered each time it's called. So the order of the two callbacks can change from one iteration to the next. All right. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.